Nestled on a large hill overlooking the Kaw River Valley stands a recognizable landmark that holds generations of memories and the story of the success of one German immigrant. This Italianette villa, known as Sour Castle at 935 Shawnee Road in Kansas City, Kansas, has been the source of much speculation for its entire existence. Over the past several decades, the condition of Sour Castle declined. Windows were boarded up. The grounds that were once a showpiece became overgrown. Neighbors over the years and spectators from a distance frankly lost hope that this property would ever be saved. There is hope now. Before the story of saving Sour Castle can be told, and before we take a journey through the restoration of this home, the story behind its construction, and this vacant property's place in Kansas City's history needs to be told. It's about Sour Castle. This could be good news, Lauren. Would you pay $10 million for a fixer-upper? And that's all we want to see. Bricks on the side have now completely collapsed. It's going to fall to pieces. It needs a lot of work, and a crew has been on property. Going back to old Yazoo. Going back to old Yazoo. Anton Philip Sauer, known as Anthony, was born in Mainz, the largest city in the Rhineland, in 1823. By 18, Anthony worked as a bookkeeper in Russia and moved at the age of 17 to Austria. There, he met a woman named Francisca and married at the age of 18. The couple had five children. Anthony traveled as far as Australia and Costa Rica, dealing in wine, wool, cotton, and coffee. In the mid-1850s, Anthony Sauer and his family moved to New York City. There, his wife passed away. Due to his own ill health, it was suggested that the cleaner air to the west may benefit him. After some travel with his sons to the Rocky Mountains, Anthony opened a tannery in Kansas City, Missouri. He also invested his money in steamboats that traveled between Kansas City and St. Louis. In 1869, Anthony married widow Mary Messerschmidt. He decided it was time to look for a piece of property to build upon that reminded him of his homeland on the Rhine. He purchased 63 acres overlooking the Kaw River Valley near Rosedale, Kansas. The land was originally patented by Shawnee Indian Thomas Big Knife and sat on the old Shawnee Indian trace that fed into the Santa Fe Trail. Asa B.B. Cross, whose works include the Vale Mansion, Union Depot in the West Bottoms, City Hall, Vaughn's Diamond Building, and Gillis Opera House was commissioned to design Sauer's new stately mansion. Cross was one of Kansas City's most important architects for the city's early boom, and sadly, the future growth of Kansas City sealed the fate of most of his creations. As the home neared its completion in August 1873, the beauty of this towering villa could be seen for miles. The front entrance had double three-paneled doors of solid walnut with an arched stone frame. Two hand-carved sandstone lions were set to guard the impressive entrance of the mansion. On the first floor, 14-foot ceilings with 12-foot high windows welcomed visitors. It was said that seven yards of fabric was required to cover each window. The receiving room included an impressive staircase with hand-carved rosewood spindles. The parlor on the west side featured Belgian lace curtains and a large fireplace with imported marble. A music room adjoined the parlor and, along with another fireplace, included a grand piano. The dining room to the west of the entrance was furnished with a marble top table and 24 chairs. A system of bells on wires could be rung from any room in the house and would signal the servants to the room they were needed in. Chandeliers imported from a supplier in Vienna were said to have had more than 600 pieces of individually cut crystals. 
The second floor held the spacious bedrooms with some very unique features. The home was the first in the entire area to have built-in closets and running water. A hydraulic engine pumped hot and cold water from a large spring on the property. A second floor bathroom was equipped with an elaborate marble tub for bathing. The third floor held the servants' quarters and a small room built to be a classroom. The framing around the doors on this floor was much simpler, but some special details, including hooks with an engraved S, can still be seen in the third floor closet today. From the third floor, a staircase ascends to a four-story tower with a lookout showcasing a spectacular view. Even today, this view from the lookout is simply breathtaking. Even the basement was impressive. The Wyandotte Gazette wrote in 1873, under the kitchen was a vegetable cellar. Under the dining room was a billiard room. Under the parlor, a deep wine cellar, the key of which Mr. Sauer intends to keep snug in his own pocket. Anthony spared no expense on the grounds of his property. It's said that the house cost about $20,000 to build, and he shelled out an additional $40,000 to improve the grounds around it. Anthony loved horticulture, and he built a large greenhouse that held his imported flowers from Europe. A fountain in the front yard had water piped from a nearby spring. Stone pig pens, a chicken house, a smoke house, and outdoor brick ovens covered the grounds of the property. Anthony didn't just hold a sweet spot for drinking fine wine, he also wanted to make it. He planted 18 acres of vines on his property. He built a stone wine cellar which, although damaged due to neglect, still exists on the property. Anthony's declining health had his family aware that death was near. In July 1879, his one-year-old daughter named Helen passed away. One month and one day later, on August 16, 1879, Anthony passed away from tuberculosis. He was 53 years old. He left his 38-year-old wife, three young children, two stepdaughters, and four grown children behind. The newspaper claimed he was a true husband and a kind, indulgent father. He was buried inside the family plot at Union Cemetery. Mary continued to live on the property and sold off 41 acres of land to be developed into a subdivision. 12 acres, including the land that held the stone chicken coops, smokehouse, and wine cellar remained. After Mary passed away in 1919, the house passed to Eva Sauer Perkins and her husband John. They lived there with their three children. In 1923, Eva oversaw extensive renovations to the home her father built. A kitchen addition off the back was added along with a garage. Tragedy struck the family when John Perkins took his own life on the second floor of the home in 1930. John's widow Eva, a strong-willed, well-educated woman who was an artist and musician, was able to pick up the pieces and continued to live in the house her father built. She remained a steadfast caretaker of her father's castle until she sold it in 1954 to Paul Barry. Incredibly private, Barry continued to live in the home and listed it on the National Register of Historic Places in 1977. Paul Barry passed away in 1985 and Sour Castle was sold to Bud Wyman and Cliff and City Jones. The house needed restoration, but even as they did work on the home, they opened it up to visitors. They had plans to make it into a bed and breakfast and hosted several weddings. Halloween parties, and other events. Three years later, in 1988, the great-great-grandson of Anthony Sauer approached the owners and offered to buy Sauer Castle. 
The new owner, a resident of New York City, had lofty plans for his family's historic property. Even with the caretaker, vandals continuously came onto the property, likely enticed by the many ghost stories surrounding it. Even though few were allowed inside the home, increased deterioration could be seen from the street. Windows were broken. The roof had extensive holes. The iron around the widow's peak was falling down. And the grounds lost some of their original structures. In August 1996, further damage was reported on the property when the caretaker and another man were charged with $30,000 in theft of items including antique chandeliers, wall sconces, mantles, and other details that once made Sour Castle beautiful. Wyandotte County slapped the house unfit for habitation in the 1990s as neighbors and history lovers lamented from a distance at the deteriorating state of Sour Castle. Every three years, the castle would make it onto the list of houses to be auctioned off due to unpaid taxes. But before the house could be sold to a new owner who may restore it, the minimum amount due was paid. In 1996, family from out of town, descendants of Sour Castle, visited the property and became deeply concerned. The interior was a shell of its former beauty. They noted that the smokehouse and the chicken coop had collapsed. The wine cellar in the back of the property had also deteriorated. The hand-carved vines and stone that once accented the cellar had crumbled. Like so many, the family on that visit just wanted some hope that Sour Castle would be saved. In 1999, a Lawrence developer wanted to restore the mansion, open a winery, and build bungalows for overnight guests on 41 acres surrounding Sour Castle. The plan included condemning and tearing down homes in the area under eminent domain. The owner asserted that he'd repaired the chimneys, brickwork, replaced the fireplaces, repaired the dormers, removed rotting floors in the basement, redone plumbing in the bathrooms, and replaced electrical wiring. The plan of the Lawrence developer fell through due to financing. The owner then promised the community and the courts that he would renovate the home. In January 2000, an eight-foot chain-link green fence was erected around the property. Some work was completed by A.L. Huber Construction, including replacing the substructure, decking, and columns of the northwest front porch. Other restoration plans halted in 2000, and the work remained incomplete. Descendants of Sour Castle have always been deeply concerned with the condition of the property. People interested in saving Sour Castle have watched the tax sales every three years in hopes that one day the owner would sell or be forced to sell. In 2018, Sour Castle suffered a serious blow. A microburst during a thunderstorm did even more damage to the west side of the tower, exposing the four-story tower to the elements. By April 2020, the castle had 28 property violations, all relating to the condition and danger of the historic landmark. In December 2020, the unified government of Wyandotte County had a court order allowing them to board up the windows of the house in order to secure it. The front porch that was under restoration in 2000 crashed to the ground in June 2021 after heavy rains caused bricks on the west side of the tower to crumble to the ground. People have always known that Sour Castle, stooped high up on the bluffs overlooking the Caw River, was a treasure worth saving. But it would take a miracle. And now the tables have finally turned. After 25 years of little progress and hope, the property was sold in March 2023 to local businessman Mike Heitman and his family. Sour Castle was in serious danger, and now? Now all of the hopes and prayers of the people both descended from the original owner and the greater community have been answered. Sour Castle, it will be saved. The design of one of Kansas City's most prolific architects, Asa B.B. Cross, 
and the legacy of one German immigrant, Anthony Sauer, will live on for generations. Over the next year, restoration will continue on both the exterior and the interior of the home. This process is no small feat. The Heitmans have hired a dream team of consultants, national leaders in historic building preservation. Strata Architecture and Preservation is the architect. Rosen Preservation is the historical consultant and Pishney Restoration will be performing the primary restoration trades. Watch as important preservation of a national historic landmark is executed. Join us on this journey as we document the restoration taking place. Be a witness firsthand as these skilled partners work to save Sour Castle. The next chapter of Sour Castle can finally begin. Must land it.